a video about um, dealing with opposing counsel. So when I was going through my case, uh, opposing counsel stressed me out badly. Um, I tend to be kind of an anxious person by nature and uh, opposing counsel uh, really took advantage of me with that because I was the one that would be sitting at work and you know my email would blow up with six emails from opposing counsel and it would stress me out super bad. I'd get very anxious. I had to go walk around the building or around the block, breathe, 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 calm down. So that was very difficult for me and having worked with lots of you guys, I, I know I'm not unique in that. And you know, when you're, when you're getting peppered with, you know, very intense, uh, threatening emails, it, it can trigger you badly. So just, I mean, just a few thoughts of that I learned in going through it that, that helped. Um, one is, is, uh, just understand it's not just you, um, you're pro se and you are playing in their goldfish bowl and, uh, and they're going to beat you up. You know, they're going to bully you and threaten you and make fun of you and tell you you don't know what you're doing and you're wasting everyone's time and I can't wait to take you to court and I'm going to take all your fees and I'm going to minimize you for your children. And this is going to freak you out. So just know that that's going to happen. Um, but, you know, be prepared for it. One thing, the best thing I learned to do was to compartmentalize things as best I could. And so in my life, what that meant was, you know, I get to work at eight. I've been self-employed for a long time. So I sit down in my little office by myself and I would tell myself from eight to 10, I'm not going to touch this. I'm not even going to check my email. I don't want to see it. If there's stuff that came in overnight or whatever, I, I don't want to look at it. I want to get my day started in some way I can. So from eight to 11, let's say I, you know, I isolate my brain and focus at lunchtime. I'm going to let myself look and then I'll receive whatever it is I receive. I know it's going to upset me, but I can go to lunch now and go take a breather and drive around for a little bit. And then I told myself I would not respond until later in the day. So I did just that. So, you know, I responded at 458 and that tended to slow down the communication a little bit because then, you know, they're getting my emails after hours, which means they won't respond till the next day. So it bought me a clean evening. So you know, that's going to happen. And so you got to figure out what works in your life to isolate your brain a little bit and, uh, and clear, clear it for the things that you really need to work on, which is your job and your life and your health and all of the things that you deserve and need. And, you know, I've had a few people that actually have lost their jobs while going through pro se work because they're not doing anything for work. I mean, from the minute they wake up to the minute they pass out at night, it is 24 seven case. And all of the stressors and all of a sudden, you know, they're not keeping up with their work. Boss is noticing and things get sideways. And, you know, uh, it's very difficult. To, it's harder than it sounds. But, you know, just just focus on that and see for whatever fits into your life, how you can remove yourself from this um, as best you can so that you can focus on the things that you need to focus on. With my last trick I did it with in terms of emails was I actually set a filter um, that... If it came from blah, 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 law offices or my ex, it just automatically forwarded it um, actually to my mother, if you can believe that. And I said, okay, mom, I'll call you at five o'clock. And then you kind of just summarize and tell me what, what came in the email. And she was able to water it down a little bit. Well, they're asking about this, that, or the other thing. And she's cutting out all the nonsense that they were throwing at me of threatening me and other things that upsets me so bad. So, you know, go to whatever links you got to go to, but you got to protect your life and your heart and your mind and, and be diligent about it because this will consume you if you don't, if you're not careful, um, as to them bullying you and other things, I mean, just know it's going to happen. Know your rights. Um, don't, don't get baited into things with them. Um, lawyers love this stuff. You know, I mean, you think about a lawyer's job 24 seven, all they're doing is, is acrimonious, you know, arguing, arguing, you're not living your life that way, but they've been doing this for 25 years and they're pretty used to this and it just goes right off their back. Well, it upsets you a lot. So disengage, man. You don't have to respond to everything. You don't have to, unless it's something specific, they email you and threaten and make fun of you, let it go. Just don't even respond. Um, sometimes you need answers from opposing counsel. Um, one thing I learned there was, again, they like to ignore you because you're dumb and you're a pro se guy. And, uh, so what I started doing is if I couldn't get an answer after the second or third email, I just started calling their paralegal. And that basically, I feel like that kind of embarrassed them a little bit because they'd walk back into their office and their paralegal would say, Oh, that guy Ben called again. And he says, you're not calling him back. And sure enough, if I wouldn't get an email or a return phone call to help. 
So a little bit of embarrassment, I guess, goes a long way in terms of, I mean, hell, call, call their partner and say, I can't get a hold of lawyer Jimmy. Thought you might be able to help me. I've been emailing him for a week. Figure out what works for you in your case and with your, your friendly opposing counsel and, uh, you know, do what you can. But you're going to get beat up. You're going to get bullied. Prepare for it mentally, emotionally. Isolate your life as best you can so that you can handle the things that you really need to handle. Um, and then don't give up. Don't, don't, um, you know, don't just roll over and die. One of the, one of the, uh, the best tricks that opposing counsel will do on you is that there will be whatever hearing and there will be a proposed order. And then they are going to try and cram that order down your throat. I promise you this will happen. And that order will be full of lots of things that they have simply pulled out of the sky to put in this order that benefits their client. So paper trail is also a big thing with opposing counsel. Email them over and over. Hi, I can't wait to review that proposed order. I can't wait to see it. I haven't seen it yet. Do you have an ETA? I've been waiting. Is, are you almost done? Then you get it. Thank you. I'm in receipt of this. I'd like uh, seven days to review this and then I will send you a full list of my proposed edits. They're going to ignore all of this. And in fact, they're not, even gonna, not only going to ignore it, but they're going to try and push it to court for judge's signature. And you're going to end up in a motion to enter hearing, which is where opposing counsel will say, court, I, here's the proposed order. It, it is perfect and it reflects everything that you said. Please sign it. You will be able to show up with your nine emails saying, judge, I've been telling it for two weeks. This thing is shot. This order is a mess. I haven't had a chance to review any of it and it's not going to work. Judge will probably say, okay, well then let's go through it now. And you get the conversation that you needed to have. And opposing counsel, frankly, looks like an idiot and your ex hasn't figured out yet that, you know, he or she just spent $3,000 to come to this hearing to sit here and do something that we could have handled over email like adults. This is all part of the game. Opposing counsel is a main player or a big player in your life right now. And so you need to figure out how to manage this person as best you can. Rarely, but sometimes opposing counsel will treat you respectfully and work with you and talk to you. Normally that is dictated by your ex, his or her client, because if his or her client is saying, look, I really don't want bloody warfare, then you probably won't get bloody warfare. If your ex hates you and is just hell bent on wrecking you, the opposing counsel is going to reflect that. So just do the best you can with it, but isolate, compartmentalize, focus, don't get triggered. Don't engage in big arguments and threats and don't rant and rave to opposing counsel. It'll come back to bite you. Stand up for yourself. Know your rights and know the rules. Okay. And, and you know, this is but one, one character in this whole mess, but an important one. So manage accordingly. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch.